This is the 13th of May, 2013. We're at Corporation in Tampa, Florida. We're uh, putting a screen on this press. Actually, on uh, one side here, be the west side, we've got a screen that has 020 to 025 thousandths of an inch slot width. Whereas on this other side, we have a screen with 020 to 015. I uh, decided we'd do that to see if we could see any difference. The material we're going to run is from a, a ethanol operation, um, stillage, fairly coarse. Um, see a little bit of blue plastic in there. We got most of that out. But uh, if I take a stick here, this is the material we're going to be running. Fairly coarse, that is it's not flour, it's not dust. Uh, so it ought to press well. Uh, it does have a tendency to uh, uh, channel, or that is squirt like mashed potatoes. If I take some uh, gear, squeeze it in my hand. It wants to do that, but if I'm careful, I can get the water to run out and leave a press cake behind. So uh, that's what we're going to be running. We're starting out with this uh, CP6 because it had a tapered shaft screw in it. We think that's our best bet. Uh, we're hooking up the press with a variable frequency drive so we can slow it down. And um, we'll want to run it amps and throughput capacity and that sort of thing to see how uh, this material runs. I mentioned that the screw has a, a tapered shaft. Here's an example you can see a constant diameter shaft. This is where the inlet of the press would be. And then as we get into compression stages, notice that shaft tapering up to a larger diameter. Uh, that's the uh, configuration we have in the six inch test press. Another thing, this whiting comes along here and it stops. There's a gap right there. And then the whiting starts again, stops there. And here's another gap. Uh, in these gaps, we have resistor teeth. So this press has first stage of compression, second stage, third stage, the third tooth, fourth stage, fourth tooth, and finally a fifth stage of compression. Um, anyway, all the Vincent presses have that feature, the inter interrupted front, almost all Vincent presses use that feature. It prevents co-rotation. It was uh, patented originally for brewer slops, is the word in the patent, and that's uh, just about what we're going to be running today. For comparison purposes, here's the screw without the tapered section. You see the inlet hopper area. Oops, first stage of compression, second stage, third stage. Notice that shaft diameter remains constant. That wouldn't be as effective in the uh, uh, spent stillage that we're going to be running today. This press only has, has only three stages of compression, but you see how we've tapered up the shaft. But notice the resistor teeth. There's a tooth, another tooth, and a third tooth for three stages of compression. The press we're running, a CP6, has five stages of compression. Here's an unusual view where you can see a press with four stages of compression and the screen. There's this wedge wire screen with those slots. And this is, uh, my guess is 15 thousandths of an inch. So we're running uh, one half of the screen, one size and the other side, the other size. Now I'm standing on the screw that goes in this particular press. These are flights that are used to uh, make the screws. Here's more flights. These are all stainless steel. And uh, goodness knows we have oodles of flights. The, uh, we're in the screw department. There's a workstation where they're welding flights onto a shaft. Getting another one to get ready to get started. Another 
two more trying to get started. Uh, we're running this shop 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I took off Mother's Day yesterday. Uh, I think we'll take off Memorial Day. But uh, anyway, the food department is uh, being pushed. I'm back in the test area. I see Bill is uh, agitating our sample. Air agitation, huh? Trying to. Trying to. Yeah. I'll catch the cone later on. Yeah, Bill's going to pour some material in. And uh, coming right through that screen, I expect it to blind over. And as soon as I see something coming out here, that's sloshing already. I'll close this cone. I've got to set it at a fairly low pressure. Anyway, this cone is now shut. And we're getting a lot of water out. Um, second five gallon pail going in already. Filled up. And you see, it looks to me like, I'll just say, if we're getting more off this side or this side. And both about the same. Flow is uh, not going anywhere. Um, we've blinded the screen, and um, which is a typical problem on stillage. I have to give this one some thought, see what we do. Okay, we've got some material on the inlet hopper, getting some dewatering. Uh, in a few seconds, that screw you see there is going to stop, and the press is going to run backwards. There it stopped. And the screw ramps up to 120 hertz for about five seconds. When we go backwards, we're wiping the screen clear with the material that's in there. We get a heavier flow. The screw has stopped, and now it's started going forward again. And we will resume at a little better flow than you saw that we had a, a little bit ago. So we have programmed the VFD to go forward for almost a minute at uh, 10 RPM and then it backs up at 40 rpm for just about three seconds i think it's supposed to be uh, we've got a real quick ramp up and ramp down uh, one second and, and so the uh, the press can operate forever this way without burning up the motor gearbox uh, wiping the screen clear the other thing we're going to do more the capacity has got to be small we're just not bringing down that inlet hopper level um, we still haven't started to make a cake, so I'm going to let this. You know, I'm going to have to let it run for a while till we get some sort of normal operation. Now, what we're going to do is uh, see if wrapping the screen uh, will increase the flow of press liquor. That is, if the screen is blinded, we're wondering if. Uh, hang on, because here we go. This. Is an oversized regulator. Yeah, give it a shot, David. Jesus. Oh my God. Ha. Before I forget, this is the fourth side of the screen. And notice we're getting at this end of the press more solids coming through. And on this side over here, where we have this 12 to 15 thousandths of an inch slot width, I'm uh, not doing anything here. I'm probably getting some cake to start coming out of this press. Um, not enough to start falling on the ground yet. Uh, we dropped a little cake down there. But, um, We've got it in operation. We're still running forward about one minute. Then we back up for 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Uh, we reset the ramp up and ramp down speeds for a half a second each, uh, wasting as little time as possible on this reverse motion. We just started going forward. It's gonna take a while for the liquid to pack in there again, uh, the solids to pack in there. 
I expect to see it pick up a little on the dewatering uh, as we go into this 45 second cycle. Uh, I have to watch how that flow goes, see if we want to stretch that cycle out. Okay, another observation. All of the press liquor is coming out on the other side of the screen. You don't see any liquid flowing down here. And what flow we have is coming out this side of the screen. Tells us something about slot width. I'm gradually making some cake, but uh, we've been running a time test. That's two minutes, and I barely have a gallon in there. Uh, we're not in the ballpark. There's a reverse cycle on this thing. Uh, but we're not in the ballpark. The auto-reversing mode on the VFD, I think I'll unprogram that and just go constant forward at a steady RPM. I'm going to change that. Okay. Uh, running a time test with the wrapper. We set it at 60 PSI. We were down at 30. Uh, we're going forward only. 10 RPM. Cake coming out. Oh, if I grab some of this cake and uh, squeeze it in my hand, I can't even get a film of water. This stuff is as dry as you'll ever get out of a screw press unless you cook it with friction. We don't want to do that. So uh, we're making dry cake. Uh, fairly decent. All right, I got about two gallons there in two minutes. So I'm doing one GPM, about 500 pounds an hour, on a press that should do eh, double, triple that. Not bad on uh, this particular material, especially since I'm only operating with one screen. This one is definitely blinded over and not working at all. That is, I look along here and I don't see any water coming down along this lower flange of the screen. It's all coming from the other side of the press. Uh, level in the inlet hopper. You can almost see it going down, not quite. Yep, it's going down. Um, wrapper, we set it on a timer over here to uh, come on very briefly every minute or two. How about that? Got something that's sort of working here. Okay, I'm going to catch this when the wrapper comes on. Apparently it comes on every half of a minute. Short burst. Don't see much change. Um, I'll try running without it. Uh, maybe if we've got the press filled up, it's operating. Not likely. Okay, I tried it without the wrapper for a while, and the flow definitely started diminishing. Uh, the wrapper does seem uh, to sustain a flow of press liquor through the screen. Okay, we've uh, pulled these screens off. Go ahead and knock some of the material off there. There you can see our tapered shaft. The flights get shorter. What we're doing is we're replacing that screen that was blinded over with the blind slots with one with wider slots. We're cleaning it out so that we uh, don't have any material pinch between the resistor bar and the screen. Uh, that being the resistor bar, the thing with the bolt holes. Okay, in that first test we ran, we got 660 pounds an hour. Um, that was uh, 60 pounds of cake and 600 pounds of pressed liquor. The cake kit was coming out so extremely dry. We'll run a moisture test on it, but since I couldn't get a film of water squeezed between my fingers, <coughs> I've upped the speed of the screw from 10 RPM to 20. That is, I'm getting that, I was getting that very dry cake because of the severe taper in the screw and the low RPM of the screw. So um, by doubling the speed of the screw, maybe the cake will come out a little wetter. And hopefully, I'll get uh, more throughput capacity than that 660 pounds per hour. Let me 
correct those numbers on that test, we had 92 pounds an hour of, uh, whoops, I got to back off here. Okay, that one, I had, the test was uh, longer than I thought. Uh, but anyway, 55 pounds an hour of uh, this press cake, 55 pounds an hour, and press liquor, 330 pounds per hour. Grand total, 385 pounds an hour in a press that could, should be doing a lot more than that. What we're running right now is the material that was wrapped around the screw that we scraped off when we replaced the screen. Ah, notice I'm getting a, quite a flow of press liquor from this side of the press, which I was getting zero before. We'll see what happens when it stabilizes. Um, both screens are about the same, same uh, slot width. A uh, third variable besides the taper of the screw and the um, uh, RPM of the screw is the pressure on this discharge cone. I'm at bare minimum. So instead of doubling the speed of the screw, if I were, say, running at 60 PSI, I would have cut it down to 20. But since I'm at bare minimum air pressure on these two air cylinders pushing this cone shut, that's why I had to uh, double the speed of the screw. Uh, looking good. Um, once we get some of the fresh material going through here, we'll start another time test. Okay, we've started a second time test. Uh, this one at uh, 20 RPM. We've not turned on the wrapper. Uh, we're getting a strong flow of fresh liquor, as you can see. Um, working. This is material out of... Uh, our blue drum that was shipped to us. We'll see if it keeps working without the wrapper. We're uh, 40 seconds into our time test. What is most likely going on here, why hasn't the screen blinded? Uh, why is it working so well? It isn't that we change the screen. It isn't that we change the air pressure. It isn't that we change the RPM of the screw. It isn't that we're reversing. It isn't the uh, wrapper. We're near the bottom of the blue bucket, and we're getting thicker material, which tells us a pre-thickener, a side hill screen or a DSM uh, parabolic screen, whatever you call it, would be a value. We had trouble on the very dilute flow, and this stuff that is settled out just by gravity, not a whole lot, is um, working a lot, lot better.